So I grew up as a pianist, um, actually idolizing Elton John. And when you are playing piano in college, uh, you encounter singers that need an accompanist. So I started meeting all these opera singers and I fell in love with their voices. And I said, maybe, maybe there's a world that I don't know much about. Maybe there's this world of music that, that I'm totally unaware of, but uh, that is for me. Somewhere along the way, I, I discovered conducting it and I felt that my role uh, in, in the world of opera could best be served by being in the pit. And so that's where I find myself now. Virginia Opera, I've been here for about 10 years and that eventually worked my way up the ladder to where I am now artistic director of Virginia Opera and I conduct all the shows. <laughs> As a 30-something, uh, I, de I desperately want more 30-somethings and 20-somethings uh, to be in the theaters. And one of the ways that I feel that we can best connect with people my age and younger um, is to show them that these stories are relevant, that they're timely, that, they're, um, that they involve them. And so I started thinking about well, what is opera doing to, uh, to find stories? I realized that so many operas were being adapted from cinema. And um, a few summers ago, I was doing some scouting throughout the country. I encountered this work, Il Postino, The Postman. The opera version of Il Postino is really interesting because uh, it does, I think, take the best of both the novel and the film. It centers around the idea of poetry awakening the soul and leading the main character, Mario, into uh, a new phase of his life. And uh, that's all thanks to the help of the famous Pablo Neruda, uh, who uh, was an actual person, was a real life person. Uh, and what's great about the way that the story was written for the novel and then subsequently in these other um, productions, such as the film and the opera, is that Neruda is the central vehicle for uh, inspiring this young man into uh, falling in love with the woman of his life. I'm Daniel Montenegro, and I'm playing Mario in Virginia Opera's production of Il Postino. He's a young man who, um, he hasn't really found anything in life that he's passionate about. And I think what's so relatable about him is, you know, everybody falls in love, you know. Um, this opera is about that. The story is that he gets, he, Pablo Neruda, gets so much mail, they had to hire a special guy just to bring him his mail. He becomes a very good friend to this extremely poor, uneducated man who brings his mail to him. Beatrice is a young, sort of an ingenue type character. We see her young, hopeful for, you know, a bright, exciting future that's not in this teeny tiny town. And we see her meet um, Mario, this fisherman who also has bigger dreams and ideas than being a fisherman. And they fall in love and they get pregnant. I mean, sorry, they do, they do get pregnant, but they get married first. <laughs> My character is Matilda Neruda and I'm, I'm Neruda's, I believe, last wife. My role is really to inspire Neruda. He's obviously very politically involved, but she continues to remind him of the poetry that he is really meant to live through. The characters are so immediately recognizable. So you have the older couple whose love is still very intense, and you have this younger couple who are just falling in love. So it's really about love, this, this piece. And then, because it's an opera, someone has to die, but I won't tell you who. Back in the day, uh, you know, if you go to European opera houses, it was a place to be seen as much as it was a place to go see a show. In fact, a lot of the lobbies, you know, sort of look like you're on stage. Um, so there's still something very special about going to the opera. It is sort of the grandest spectacle. We have acting, we have the orchestra, we have a set, um, costumes, all these characters. It's it's, it's everything, it's sort of the biggest, grandest show that there is. 
a lot of opera takes place in like the way distant past. This takes place in the, in the last century and the conflicts of the last century are the conflicts we're having now. Um, the challenges of, um, you know, finding a romantic partner and wooing them. We have those challenges now. There are all kinds of myths about opera and, you know, it, it's, it's elitist and I'm, it's in a foreign language, it's about kings, queens, and gods, and nothing to do with me, and, you know, all those things. And there's certain truths there, uh, but I'm here to dispel as many myths as I can, because more, the more people that, that know what opera has to offer, the more people that will want to, to be a part of it. Um, when you sit in the theater and, and, and you hear these voices, up close and personal, without any amplification or anything, um, it it just it gets you in your bones. The idea that poetry can save you, and that uh, art can lead you into uh, a new life that makes you happy, is something that we are really thirsty for right now. You never know what magical thing lies around the corner, and I think this opera is beautiful and magical, and the production is gorgeous. Everybody who's ever loved somebody is gonna get something from it. It's also in Spanish, so people who've never been to an opera who, who speak Spanish, this is a great um, introduction. The human voice, it's, it's the most basic thing. It's, it's, it's the first thing that we all have. We, we don't have books and poetry and any of that. We have our voices. And that's, I mean, the sounds that those voices are, are able to convey, the expression, the human emotions, um, that's, there's so much power there, and that's what excites me about opera, and, and that's what I hope to share with the world.